right now I'm producing a television pilot that's based off of a true story and we have attached a showrunner. And one thing that I found that's really interesting in pitching TV um, that I didn't know going in, and actually I took stage 32 education to, to figure this out, um, is a lot of times managers or uh, you know, managers will go out, not with your pilot. You know, our, our writer has a, an amazing pilot. The pilot is what, is what got our showrunner attached. But mm -hmm. the one thing that, uh, that our technique that we're going out with is we're actually going out with the, the pitch Bible before we even showing the pilot. So yeah. can, can you talk about the about pitching projects and um, yeah. what your experience is? I, I think it'll be really interesting to hear. Um, I, yes, I wanna add two things to what you just said. I think that when you're talking about your bio, which I think is exactly right, I would find the most weird, esoteric, like, like I, I wouldn't say like, I grew up in New Mexico and I had a cat and it was, <laughs> It was, it was named Maggie, you know, I would like my college roommate during the summer worked as a pig farmer, <laughs> like, like, and she be, she know to become, she runs, she ran, um, she ran Providence, like as the, like, uh, as the front of house. Um, but I always love that every time I would see her, I'd be like, I know that every summer you would go and work at the pig farm, which like, if I was reading someone like that would, I would, I would want to talk to that person. So when you're thinking about your bio, think about the funny, um, weird, super memorable part of you that isn't generic, that isn't necessarily where you came from. I mean, it, it certainly can be. Um, but if you came from, you know, Dubuque, you also, you know, w lived under the statue of the giant air, what, whatever it is, you know, you get what I'm trying to say. The second thing I would say, and this is connect, try to connect both questions, is pitching right now is based on IP. IP is intellectual property. It is almost impossible to sell something right now without pre-existing material. Um, and that means that if you, and that can be like a novel that you found, a comic, comic books obviously are the golden grail right now. Um, if you can find proof of, there, it's called proof of concept. It means that your pitch can actually go for, you know, five years, because here we've got proof of it. Like, Game of Thrones was this great big book series before they went and pitched it. Um, and in terms of the pitch process, um, right now I've had people pitching Bibles rather than scripts. I've seen it both ways. I've seen it, people will write like a spec, it gets turned in, it gets made. Um, and I've also seen it that people come in and they have to really pitch out 10 episodes. Um, and I don't know to what extent, what detail, like I haven't had, I haven't done that particular part of the process yet. My, my sense is the more detail, the better. The other part of the pitch process that is very popular right now is a thing called a lookbook, which is you hire, so you hire, there's people that do this, or you go to Kinko's and you put together pictures um, of the mood and the actors and scenes of what you're trying to pitch. For example, if you're doing a show about a murder on a farm starring Nicole, like starring Nicole Kidman, you know, and that's who's in your mind, walking into the room, it's great to have a book that has a moody picture of a barn, there's fog, maybe there's a sheep or a horse or something, and then you see Nicole Kid, like, Nicole Kidman, and you just take a shot from a movie. Like, you don't have to Photoshop all this. Like, I mean, you certainly could, but you take a shot of her, um, you know, towards the end of the hours when she's walking by the lake. And then you would have another shot of a car driving down a desolate road to where that lake is, you know? So it's, it's this weird scrapbook of cinema that, sets the tone and the mood and the visual for the person you're pitching it to because that's incredibly helpful for that. 
So whatever, whatever it is you're pitching, it just underscores, it illustrates what you're doing since we're in a visual medium. Um, and that's, that's a brand, that's a brand new thing. Like since, I mean, it's not brand new, but the fact that there are companies now that make lookbooks, I think speaks to how important these things are. You're, you're a hundred percent right. And it's new and it, you know, and that's why I wanted to talk about that because it's very different. We had talked about earlier where, you know, th there was a time where you were noticed by writing a great spec, you know, and specs are just non-existent at this point. And the Bible, you know, what we've, what we've learned here is, um, like the, for example, the Bible with the show that we're going out with, um, it's 20 pages and, you know, within that Bible, it shows some, some images, but it, basically highlights your um, your main characters, you know, kind of the the season arcs for the story and goes into your supporting characters. And it's really at a glance for people to kind of visualize and understand, can we take this thing past, you know, just one pilot episode? You know, they want to see that this will extend into whether it's a limited series or a full on, um, you know, a full on series. And then the lookbook is interesting as well, because we're going out with that with with our pitch as well. So we even have a webinar about how to how to do this if you if you don't have any design skills. We have a webinar that teaches this, and we walk you through the program how to do it. But in our pitches, um, you know, now a lot of the pitches are being done on Zoom. You have to screen share and you have to set the tone. You know, there is like that mood and that tone, and um, you know, it, it's so important to again have those tools and realize that like this is what's expected now when you are getting in, in a room to pitch, you know, because ultimately when you're getting an opportunity to pitch to that development executive, they're going to have to take what you what you give them and then they need to pitch it to their boss, you know, and then ultimately, you know, there's several layers of approval that need to happen before you can even get that green light. So, you know, make it easy for the person that you're pitching to and, uh, you know, and use these tools that, that Wendy and I are talking about. 